At its core, Dagger is a code generator. It generates code that you can reuse in certain compartments, we'll say, of your application. So the code that's generated is written in a way such that it can be injected as a dependency. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the concept of dependency injection in general, that sentence probably sounded very confusing. But it's not as confusing as you might think. Dependency injection simply refers to the act of using an object or objects as a dependency to another object or another set of objects. So uh, I'll give you kind of just like a little example here. This is not part of the course, like the actual course code, but this is just an example to help you uh, conceptualize dependency injection and what it is. So what I'm gonna do is create a new Java class. I'm just gonna call this user, just gonna be a plain old Java object. And this plain old Java object is gonna have two fields, uh, one for the username and one for one for the ID, so integer ID. Uh, so I could put in the getter and setters, but I'm not gonna bother. I'm just gonna insert the, uh, the constructor. Oh my, there we go. Uh, so I'm selecting both those parameters. And there we go, we have a user object with a default constructor. So what you could say here about this class is you could say that uh, the integer ID and the string username are dependencies of the user class because the user class depends on them to be constructed. So you might have never thought of this as a dependency injection, but a constructor is actually a prime example of dependency injection because you're you're using two fields in this case, but you can use you could use any number of fields to build that object. So Dagger, what Dagger does is it takes this general concept of providing dependencies to a higher level of abstraction, a much higher level of, a, of abstraction. If you use Dagger, you can effectively define dependencies and then customize the properties of those dependencies. So you can not only create dependencies, but you can kind of tailor them. You can uh, add things called scopes, which you probably don't know what those are. You can create subcomponents and put certain dependencies in subcomponents. Basically, you can kind of, uh, I guess for lack of a better word, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, you can architect dependencies within components or compartments of your application. So it really, really helps to keep things organized and helps to keep your code very clear, concise, and testable. So uh, I'll just touch on the scope thing that I just mentioned there before I move on. So uh, this isn't what you would actually do if you were using Dagger, but I just want to once again kind of give you a conceptual example. So suppose I annotated this class with the singleton class, um, and what what the singleton annotation would mean would be there's only one instance of this object within my entire application. So no matter where I was to quote unquote inject a user object, no matter what, I would get the same instance or the same memory location uh, throughout the entire application, whether I inserted it into an activity, into activity one, activity two, fragment one, fragment two, service one, wherever, didn't wouldn't matter. Wherever I injected that, I would get the same instance. This is just one of the things that you can do with Dagger. Uh, and if you think about, you know, kind of all of the cases in your application where you where you use the same object consistently over and over again. A prime example is you know, using a retrofit instance, using a glide instance. These things never change, or they almost never change, and you use the same ones throughout your application. So with Dagger, you can not only do that throughout your application context or throughout the app-wide app context, but you can, you can build sub-components and sub-compartments where those objects can exist and they wouldn't exist anywhere else. So it's a really, really cool feature to uh, modulize your, your code, modulize, I can never say that word, uh, and different objects. Keep in mind, this was a theoretical example. You have to do a lot more setup than just annotating something with the singleton to create an instance. Uh, so just keep in mind that this is only an example. Now, another really great thing about Dagger is that, like I said, it forces you to uh, compartmentalize and module modulize uh, the different components of your code. So it helps to keep things nice and separate. Uh, you know, the separation of concerns principle, always try and keep things uh, not, basically don't let things know about other things that don't need to know about other things. I guess that was a really terrible way to say it. But anyway, I brought up this, I made this diagram for the application that we're going to be building in the course. And uh, I know there's a ton going on in this diagram. You're probably looking at this and your eyes are glazing over, but I just wanted to show it to you right now. Don't, you know, expect to understand it completely. But uh, I wanted to just kind of 
show it to you now and uh, introduce you to it because I'm going to be referring to it throughout the course. So like I said, this is this is the diagram that's uh, modeling kind of the, the dagger interactions or the dagger components for the application that we're going to be building. So right away, the first thing I want to point out is that uh, there's three components, these things called components, and I'm sure you don't know what those are, so don't worry. But uh, there's the app component, which stretches the entire application lifetime. Just notice that it's named app component and it stretches the application lifetime. Uh, notice there's another one named auth component and it only stretches a portion of the application timeline. Main component is the third one. So now the last kind of thing I want to point out before we move on is uh, it starts with the auth component. So the auth component starts up right away. Then you have an event logging in. Uh, once the user logs in, they get access to the main component. If they log out, they then go back to the auth component. So it's it's modeling the general flow of the application uh, without referring to like specific views or anything. And I have the application on the screen here, so I can just give you a quick demo so that you can kind of tie in what I just showed you on the diagram with what's actually happening in the app. All right, so here is the login screen. This is auth activity is what it's called. And as I said, when I refer back to the diagram here, uh, this is uh, the component that's active right now is auth component. App component is also active, obviously, because it stretches the entire application lifetime. But right now, auth component is active. Uh, so now, once I log in, all I got to do to log in is type in a user ID. So any number from 1 to 10 will work. Uh, if I click log in, it then queries a REST API, authenticates the user based on their ID. And now we have access to main activity, which is part of the main component. So no longer do we get access to anything that exists within the auth component. So all of the retrofit requests, all of the objects that are associated with the auth component, we no longer have access to them. Now we have access to main activity, which has two fragments, profile fragment, which is the one that you see here, and we have posts fragment, which is just a list of uh, random posts that this user, uh, that uh, the dummy data is producing basically. So that's it. And then if you were to log out, clicking log out, uh, the main component is then destroyed the lifetime of the the life cycle, or yeah, I guess the lifetime is what you would call it, is destroyed. It's actually called the scope. The scope is destroyed, and we're headed and we're headed back to the the auth activity. And uh, from the diagram, you can see that the auth component then would become active again. So that that's generally in a nutshell uh, what the application is going to be like. Um, it's uh, it seems really simple, but there's a lot going on behind the scenes. There's a lot of dagger code. There's a ton more code than I bet you think there is, and it's gonna it's gonna give you a really really good picture of you know using components, subcomponents, scopes, custom scopes, um, providing different objects, singletons, all kinds of stuff. I'm just trying to name everything I can think of that's gonna be covered in the course. Um, but anyway, that's that's just kind of the brief introduction. I want to introduce you to the concept of dependency injection. If you're confused, don't worry, you should be. Dependency injection is very confusing. I just told you a whole bunch of things that you probably have never heard before. Definitely, if you're confused, that is the norm right now. You should be confused. Um, so anyway, um, by the end of the course, you will definitely be very comfortable with Dagger. I'm going to show you a lot of examples, and I'm going to show you how to build, how to architect uh, something real. So even though this is simple, the architecture is real, the structure is real. So you're going to see uh, a really good example by the end of the course. So now in the next video, we are going to start writing code. I know we've been, uh, I think we're quite a few videos in now, and we haven't written really any code yet. So in the next one, we are going to start that.